in the world do you give it to Deion Sanders? They beat Baylor, big deal in overtime. They beat UCF, North Dakota State. They got killed at Nebraska. Listen, I like Deion, too. He gets great ratings. He's got personalities. They're a great job. I get it. But let's take it easy, Steve. Really? Colorado is the team of the year so far in college football? It's about where you come from. You inherit a, 20, a, a 1 and 11 program. You win four games last year. We made all of this noise about how you lost six straight in nosedive, losing seven of eight. You come back this season, they're projecting you're going to finish 11th in your new conference. 11. And you go out there and you win four of your first five games. What if he makes a bowl game? What if they win nine or 10 games? You trying to tell me that Deion Sanders is not going to warrant consideration for coach of the year? I'm telling you, you should be drug tested if you say that. You should be drug tested. All right, boys, welcome back to another video. Swaggy here. Today, we're going to be talking about Deion Sanders, Coach Prime, and how he's become one of the best coaches in all of college football this season. It's wild, too, because this is only his second year with the Buffaloes. The first season, they went from a team that had won one game the year prior to four, and now all of a sudden, they're at four. But as we know, last year, the Buffs started off 3 0, they're 4 and 1. Things can change for the worse very quickly, which is why it's so important for the Buffs to keep their foot on the gas. I think Prime's doing a hell of a job. He's held people accountable. He's given them their props when they played well. He hasn't attacked guys. He's just trying to be the best coach he can. And Prime is doing a great job, of course, giving Pat Shermer the play calling duties, bringing in Robert Livingston as the DC. And then we look at Warren Sapp and what he's done with the defensive line and just in general having these guys working hard. The Buffs are legit. I think they can win the Big 12. I think they are the best team in the Big 12 right now. And I don't think it's fair to say that, oh, well, who have they beaten? Because the Buffs have only played who's in front of their schedule. They beat an FCS powerhouse in North Dakota State. They did lose in Nebraska. They beat Colorado State, which was a rival. They beat Baylor, who was in their conference. And then they beat UCF, who was in their conference and was 3-0 coming into the game and was, of course, a 14.5 point favorite. So for Buffaloes, they go into a place where they weren't supposed to win and they end up winning by 27 points. It was a dominant performance all around. But just looking at what Prime has done, he's completely just revamped the front. Four new offensive linemen. Zelenskis was the only guy playing center who ended up staying in that starting five. Defensive line completely reworked, of course, going out there and bringing in guys in the transfer portal at the receiver position. Most uh, notably, Lejante Wester, who caught that Hail Mary in the OT win versus Baylor. And then you've got just you know, some other guys as well who have stepped up and become better. I'm looking at a Jimmy Horn Jr. who was good last year, and then this year he's been a stud. Travis Hunter, I mean, it's only, <laughs> I don't even know, I can't even put it into words how good Travis Hunter is, but it's crazy to think how he can actually get better. Last year was incredible, and then this year he's been the best player in college football. I mean, last year you could argue he was the best player in college football. He missed some time, which sucked, but this year he's been healthy. He's been dominant. His streak of 100 plus yard receiving games came to an end. Yeah, the Buffs could have thrown him out there on that last drive and got him it, but we're not here to set records. We're not here to get views. We're here to win. We're here to win the Big 12 championship. And I think that's kind of the difference between Colorado last season versus this year. And this is just in my opinion. I'm not saying this is true necessarily, but it did seem like last year, I'm not gonna say it wasn't a football team because they were in just about every game they played and they started off three and out. They were competitive, but it just seemed like a movie. And it seems like this season, it's just all about winning. And that's just been the focal point, man. This team does not care about anything but winning. And it's shown up on the field because the defense has made adjustments. And you guys did point out to me that, of course, there was a special teams touchdown in that game against Baylor. So I talked about how the defense has been just lights out in the second half of all these games. Well, the fact that you know seven of those came on special teams just kind of even proves my point even more is the defense is just dialed in right now. Last year, it was so bad. One of the worst in the country. Offensive line probably the worst in the country and then we saw what they're able to do when they're dominating up front and that's just absolutely blow teams out of the water and a very good team a top 30 top 35 team in the country in UCF Shader Sanders was sacked eight times against Baylor against UCF he was only sacked one time I believe I don't have the numbers in front of me but I believe he was sacked just one time 
And what happened, guys? 28 of 35, incredible efficiency. Basically a perfect game by Shadur outside of that interception. Uh, of course, in the, in the first quarter, that was just very uncharacteristic from him. But three touchdowns, 290 yards. The recipe for the buffs is, can we have Shadur throw less than 40 times? Because if he has to throw any more than that, it means we're in a shootout or we're not being able to run the ball, right? We were able to run the ball. Yeah, we didn't rush the, for 100 and. 77 yards like UCF did but we were actually more efficient 29 of 128 and they were 44 of 177 I don't have a calculator on me but I'm very very confident that we were more efficient and that's just the perfect balance yeah rush it 29 times throw 28 almost perfect and that's been sort of uh, the blueprint for the buffs too lately is running the ball the same amount we're throwing it that's how you win at every single football level you don't want to be a one-dimensional team and it's also Shermer not shying away from the run he's continued to go with it even when it hasn't always worked and we've seen guys step up of course getting Dolan Hayden back from an injury was huge Isaiah Gustave has stepped up and been big Michael uh, Michael sorry Mike, excuse me Michael Welch true freshman five for 26 and a touchdown Hayden did have a touchdown as well I do think the mix of those three guys is going to be big. And Charlie Alfredall is also very solid as well. He came in on the final drive and went three for 11. We've got a lot of guys who can make plays. We also could put the ball into our receiver's hands on end arounds and whatever, I guess, end arounds or sweeps, things like that. Because I'm looking at LeJounte Wester. Travis Hunter is a guy who we've seen get the ball in some you know, jet touch passes, things like that. Just, we have so much speed at the receiver position though why not just get them out in the backfield and just you know, be creative and make some plays i mean that would be just so difficult to stop i'm kind of excited just thinking about that hopefully Shermer can draw that up he's done a little bit this season so and then will shepherd had a 47 yard touchdown catch travis hunter nine for 89 and a touchdown i mean to this point an underwhelming game for travis hunter as a receiver is 89 yards and a touchdown just think about that for a second jimmy horn jr five for 41 i like him a lot was just huge in that first game, of course, against North Dakota State. And then Lejante Wester, three for 34 in a touchdown. Uh, that was one of those plays where he was on an end around on a reverse and ended up scoring. And then uh, Welch had two catches for 13 yards. I'm super excited. I'm disappointed we don't play this week. But I do think that this is the perfect buy. Perfect buy possible. Coming off a huge win, build momentum, get healthy, and then come off of that in our biggest game of the year. Yeah, the UCF game was huge. But guys, at home against Kansas State, we're about to find out who Colorado really is because if they win this game, which I do think we're going to win it, just like I felt very good against UCF, yeah, I was surprised we won by 27, but that fact we won, no, I'm not surprised. I believe in this team. This is my team. Of course, I'm going to support them, ride or die, but Kansas State's ranked, and they're ranked 20th right now. They're one of the best teams in all of college football. We don't want to let them come into our building and beat us, so I'm excited, man. There's, that's all I can say. Travis Hunter, I feel like, is going to have a couple of touchdowns. He's going to have a couple of pass breakups. I think Shadur Sanders has a big game. I think we run the ball all over uh, Kansas State because the Buffs had a game plan against UCF and it ended up working flawlessly. Now it's time to do that against Kansas State. Now what it comes down to is talent. And that's why after the Nebraska loss, I didn't lose faith. I believed in my team because they have the talent. They have a lot, a lot of good players on this roster. Everyone says, oh, it's Travis Hunter and Shadur Sanders. That's just not true. Especially all the transfers, the new players, the additions, the scholarships. In the coaching, guys, I mean, we've got an NFL head coach as our OC. We've got Coach Prime. We've got Livingston as the DC, and we've got Warren Sapp. 